Thank you very much for joining me on this Thursday. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. Thank you for all your support, subscribing to this channel, sharing this channel, building this weather community. It is for you, so let's get to it. I want to get to Nigel forming right there. That is definitely blossoming. Uh, we're going to see that potentially turn into a hurricane, so I want to dive into that. Of course, Lee, I want to get into the impacts, the winds on Lee, and the storm surge as we take a look at the uh, Bay of Fundy. Very important, that surge lifting up toward parts of Canada and New England. And there is Margo, which will be out there for days and days and days, still just off uh, to the west of the Azores. Here's a close look at Bermuda. Now, Bermuda, we've been been mainly dry this morning. Some uh, breeziness, some gustier winds as a whole. As I've been mentioning for days and days, the core of this is going to lift just off to the west. We will see some tropical storm gust moving in into Bermuda, especially later today. So the winds are going to pick up, of course, the seas have been building clearly. With that, we're going to have a lot of the gust around 50 miles per hour or 80 kilometers an hour. So that's what we're looking at. Anywhere from about 70 to 90 kilometers an hour for some of the wind gusts. So we're going to see this especially later today through tonight into very early tomorrow as this system lifts up to the north. Now it is going to be weakening. Now let me get kind of down the road from Bermuda north and watching over here. Here's Cape Cod to get toward Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, Newfoundland over there and uh, we get over toward New Brunswick here. Here's Maine, uh, New Hampshire here. Now this is by the time we get into late on Friday that's when conditions will go downhill. Now, generally, most of the action is actually going to be to the east of Cape Cod. Yeah, there's going to be gustier winds. As you get over toward the bay, we're going to see that flow. I'll show you the winds in a second. But as we work our way into tomorrow night and Saturday, heavier weather tries to work in uh, near Halifax. Halifax just off to the west. That's what I was mentioning yesterday. Back through parts of Maine. That's where heavier, heaviest weather is. The center should it can actually come right up through the uh, Bay of Fundy, Fundy, and it should work its way right toward New Brunswick or clip right into Nova Scotia. Again, this is not as strong as a Fiona. Fiona hit more over here, uh, but it is going to come in with tropical storm force conditions. Serious situation as this uh, works in. Here's Bangor as you get into Maine. Uh, again, that's where the worst weather will be throughout the day on Saturday. Extreme uh, eastern Maine, back through New Brunswick, watching Prince Edward Island and over to parts of Nova Scotia. Back side of this, you see as we get over towards St. John's, uh, Newfoundland, uh, we'll see uh, some gustier winds at times of the core of this, New Brunswick and into Nova Scotia. That's where some of the worst weather will be with this as we go throughout uh, tomorrow night and then especially working through the way our day on uh, Saturday. Here's a look at the winds. These are the, uh, this is by the time we get into tomorrow afternoon. These are the core winds. Huge wind field out of this. That's why those winds will be coming down out of the north and uh, even northwest Cape Cod Bay. So that's why there'll be a little bit of a backup over here watching that. And you see the winds, you get that counterclockwise flow around a tropical system or really any storm system uh, in this uh, hemisphere. So you see how we're on the edge of rain. Now Boston, for example, under tropical storm, I think it's watches uh, by this point, but most of the tropical storm, sustained tropical storm conditions will be just offshore. So we're looking more even just offshore Maine. Yeah, there's going to be some gusty winds, but really our New Hampshire, I should say, but there are going to be gusty winds, uh, stronger winds over toward Maine and uh, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. That's where the bulk of it is. So yeah, we get some gust in New Hampshire uh, down through uh, Cape Cod, but again, the heaviest will be over here. And you see again, lifting right up. This is by the time we get into a Saturday evening. So we'll have a landfall of what will be a post-tropical system at that point. It's going to lose its tropical characteristics, but a landfall either in Nova Scotia, very close to extreme eastern sections of Maine, or as we get over toward a New Brunswick. Brunswick. This is on Saturday afternoon and you see the winds, the white shading, 80 kilometers an hour or 50 miles per hour. We'll have some higher gust in that white shading and then we'll still see some gusty winds on Sunday. Prince Edward Island, we may get some gustier winds as we work our way into Saturday night into Sunday. So you see the key over here, the legend over here, it got kilometers an hour and miles per hour. If you want to go back in this video just to kind of get a feel, pick a spot on your map. That's the nice thing about YouTube. You could kind of go back and uh, see how this evolves and then all of this kind of wrap in and eventually weakening some as we work our way into the second half of the weekend. Now this is a problem, the storm surge, uh, because where this comes on shore is going to be, of course, with the system as a whole, you get a surge of water. But where this comes on shore is going to be very important, where we have that uh, flow on the east side coming in out of the south. That helps the water pile up. So if this were to come uh, very close to a uh, Bar Harbor, up to uh, St. Andrews, even St. John, uh, that would really help funnel in uh, some of the, uh, the water over 
over toward the Bay of Fundy. Bay, Bay of Fundy, by the way, has the uh, craziest, if you will, tides on Earth. They have the highest, uh, I mean, the tides can climb from low tide to high tide, uh, three meters. So uh, they've got some of the uh, craziest uh, tides, some incredible stuff here. Beautiful, beautiful part of the uh, world right through uh, here. Uh, with that said, it's hard to tell the surge. Again, the surge could be upwards of nine feet, but in a scenario like this, especially with the Bay of Fundy being uh, with uh, those crazy tides, the timing of everything is going to be uh, very uh, specific or very uh, important to what happens with this. But point being, a surge potential here, watching that very carefully. Now, track everything on track. Center should come on shore near New Brunswick or Nova Scotia by the time we get into a Saturday night. So it will be a tropical storm or post-tropical uh, storm at that point. Now the winds, Eastern Maine, New Brunswick into Nova Scotia will have some of the winds around 110 kilometers an hour, 70 miles per hour. You get toward uh, New Hampshire, near Boston, down through the Cape, winds 40. May get some, we'll get some gusts. Hyannis, uh, Provincetown may get some gusts around 50 miles per hour. Uh, you're very weather savvy in the Cape, and it's nothing you haven't seen before. You get crazy nor'easters. Uh, nonetheless, watching the uh, back uh, bay just with the uh, backup of water there, but the core of the winds right here, and then even lesser as you get toward Cape Breton and then up toward uh, Newfoundland, uh, that's where we'll have lesser winds. But we're gonna obviously have the coastal issues, the surge, some power outages, in some spots. So I know you're making the preps. Uh, I was reading the comments yesterday, uh, getting some of the uh, generators and that sort of thing uh, ready uh, for the potential of some power loss. And what's interesting is this is not a nor'easter, uh, so a lot of the leaves are still on the trees. Uh, so with the winds, that could allow some trees to come down uh, easier because uh, there's that resistance because the leaves are still on. Uh, we're not quite at to the uh, peak of fall foliage uh, yet. All right, so we get a look here. Now here's the Caribbean, Anguilla, uh, St. Martin, Montserrat, Antigua, Barbuda, Guadalupe, Dominica, St. Lucia, Barbados. And you see here, look at this blob here. Now I'm not certain, as certain on this is where it was going to go. Uh, thank you, by the way, for your trust with Lee. I was tracking the kilometers offshore, the miles offshore, everything as a whole held with Lee. This one, I have a few more question marks because down the road, I'm not sure. Short term, uh, I do expect a curve, which is good for us in the Caribbean. That's some good news. Love to pass along good news. Here we are, St. Lucia, Grenada, Barbados, Trinidad, and Tobago. This is uh, later today. Now, watching off to the east to see how this evolves, to see how this develops. This area here looks to become Nigel. It should become a tropical storm and then eventually a hurricane. Initially, it is going to make that curve. I see something like this. I'm like, ah, oh, good. We're in good shape for the most part. But then it's going to curve back a little bit. So on Saturday, it'll be over here. And down the road, if this doesn't come close to the Bahamas, it could be very close to Bermuda again. So heads up Bermuda, watching you obviously for Lee now. But for the potential of this, you can see here, uh, it starts to curve, but then it curves back a little bit. By Monday, it should be a hurricane or close to it at that point. So it's going to be a formidable system. Almost all the models have this developing into a hurricane. And you see how, again, it's a little more uh, to the uh, west, which I don't like. It's still generally northwest, but I was kind of hoping it would just hook and kind of move out. But this would bring it potentially close to Bermuda down the road. But as a whole, I have a lot of question marks down here. If it's a little more to the south, it may not feel these fronts up here. The fronts are what kind of helps pull them up to the north. So there is a chance it can miss a front and trek a little bit more to the west. So I am watching it. Short-term good news. I do expect a short-term curve, and then we'll see what happens after that. You see, again, northwesterly flow, and then it kind of hints a little bit over here. So we'll see what happens. Here we are in the Caribbean watching the modeling, but more importantly, I'm watching the environmental conditions. Sometimes the models lag. They're not as quick to see what's going on in the environment. That's why I'm watching that for you. So Nigel, the next name on the list. Uh, we'll see how the outcome of that goes, but down the road, it could impact uh, land. Where? I'm not sure yet, but watching over toward Bermuda in particular. Short term, as we, I mean, boy, it has been so hot. That heat dome in place, if you didn't see yesterday's video, I was talking about why it is so hot, why it is so dry. Storms have been tracking up here. Uh, no tropical waves have been sliding by. I do believe that is going to change as we get into October. Now, as we get into tomorrow, scattered storms, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Jamaica, we could get a few storms. We had some yesterday in Belize, a little bit more though, Costa Rica, Panama, as we work our way into Saturday. Saturday, Northern Columbia, we'll see some rain. But October, that's when we start to see some fronts dropping in and tropical development will be more likely in the Caribbean in the month of October, which could be good and bad. We could use some of the rain, 
but we don't need a hurricane developing. I do expect the Caribbean and the Gulf to be very active in the month of October. El Nino usually doesn't have as big of an effect uh, in the Gulf and the Caribbean. So we're going to see some stuff developing. I'll be tracking it for you. Right now, watching some of the uh, scattered areas of shower storms. This spot here in the eastern Pacific still may develop. Not a bother there. So throughout the day, scattered storms. The next few days in Jamaica, 40% chance today. 20% chance for us in St. Lucia today. See how that rain chance stays minimal. Back through Barbados, a 20% chance today. A 20% chance today in Trinidad and Tobago. So, so hot at times. Definitely need to get the rain. Even some of that dust has been around Grenada. Rain chance about 10% today. 10% St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Way too low. We depend on this time of year to stock up on some of that rain. Puerto Rico, rain chance 50%. That's scattered storms. 20% chance today, tomorrow, right through the weekend. U.S. and British Virgin Islands. And we get back towards St. Kitts and Nevis. Rain chance about 10% today. In that limited chance in Antigua, Barbuda. 10% chance the next two days. 10% chance the next couple days in Anguilla, 20% chance on Saturday. Isolated showers and storms around Belize right through the weekend. We get back through the Bahamas, rain chance 20%. Uh, by the way, the seas obviously are very, very high. That surf very dangerous around the Bahamas, uh, southeastern United States, of course, up toward the uh, northeastern United States as well. North side of Puerto Rico, uh, Dominican Republic, for example, some dangerous uh, surf with lead to the north. 10% chance of rain, St. Martin, uh, Seba, Stacia, Yucatan Peninsula, isolated shower storm over toward uh, Cancun today. 30% chance on the Cayman Islands today and tomorrow. Only a 10% chance on the Turks and Caicos watching the dangerous surf. Isolated shower storm Haiti in the Dominican Republic a little bit higher in, uh, or rather in Haiti, the Dominican Republic a little bit higher today. 50% chance of afternoon storms. Aruba, we have been super dry. We have been super dry in Curacao and Bonaire. Rain chance so, so limited, mainly on the dry side. Guadalupe, Dominica uh, working our way to Martinique, rain chance 10. 20% over the next two to three days. 70% chance of rain today, tomorrow in Costa Rica. Isolated 30 to 40% chance in northern Venezuela, even back through northern Colombia. Guyana, our rain chance low. It is low Guyana. It is low in Suriname. So plenty to track. We are watching Lee near Bermuda. Again, forecast has been holding on that, moving up toward Canada, parts of the United States, watching Maine. Uh, Nigel trying to form out there. Short term, it does make that curve, which is good. That is the most most likely scenario in that heat dome across the Caribbean that will eventually break, but that could actually be somewhat good and bad news. As I mentioned, as we get into October, we could have some tropical development in the Caribbean. October is very active, Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. I'll be watching that hurricane season goes through the end of November. I'm thinking of you if you're dealing with Lee in parts of New Brunswick, uh, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, uh, Maine, I'll watch over toward Cape Cod, parts of New Hampshire, and uh, again, Bermuda, watching for Lee and the potential of another system back behind it. So thinking of you, please be safe, by the way, uh, if you're dealing with some of the uh, higher surf, we're seeing some of those issues. So keep me posting in the comments what you get or what you don't get. Hope you have a great day ahead.